hello everybody, how are you all doing today? So, welcome to another session of me learning to do, well, art. Well, quote unquote art, I can't draw for shit. <laughs> but anyways, um... I'll be studying as per usual with my blender section. If you're looking at the video, then you won't have to worry about the second section because both Blender and Krita, the second part of this stream, will be separate recordings. And oh right, also I'm gonna be doing a little experiment and that is running some music provided by YouTube itself. So I don't worry about copyright because this is uh on the YouTube um, dashboard itself on the audio library where it says clearly what we can use this music on our content and not worry about copyright so hopefully that music is not too loud I'm gonna lower it just a tiny bit because I am worried about it being loud and you guys not properly hearing me And if it does happen to be loud, do let me know. I just wanna uh, try experiment with this a bit, get the volume right, and have something so that you don't just hear my voice, but maybe something nice in the background. And uh, doing like a variety of just ambient music, uh, a variety of things right now and what well, is the best I could find that would I feel that would work but anyways let's hop on right over to the tutorial itself I did resize the capture of the site where I'm looking at the documentation we left off at the menu section we were about to start this but I was already uh, so together with Tyre and I did need to move on to the Krita section. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I do not know. Also, I think my preview bugged out a little bit. Hopefully everything is still technically working. Yes, it's, it's saying that it's working, so I guess something happened to my preview or something. Ah, no, it is working just fine. Never mind. Oh, God. Damn it. Excuse me, I need to readjust a few things again. There we go. Uh, if it happens that I need to do something in the blender, I have it running on the background. Uh, see, it's right there, running on the background, just in case I actually need it. I don't know how far I'm going to be getting into today's section for Blender, and I'm hoping that the audio is working just fine. Oh, and before I carry on, I almost forgot. Uh, down in the description below, you will find a link to the Parker Shop where you can purchase energy mixes, sleep mixes, hydration mixes, shakers, and even stickers. And if you use your code Blackheart, you will get a 10% discount and it helps up the channel in the process. Anyways, on with where we left off. Oh, and for those that are seeing this for the first time, I stream this every Tuesday, and there will be somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours, uh, the Blender section, and the Krita ones will be for a, roughly an hour. But if you're looking at the video, then you don't have to worry about the Krita section, just once it reaches the end of the Blender section, uh, that's where I'll stop our recording and start a new one for the other one. Anyways, on with the actual uh, documentation. Menus. Blender uses a variety of different menus for accessibility, uh, accessing options and tools. Selecting menus can be interacted with the following uh, with the following ways. Mouse selection. No shit. Uh, I can just skip that one. Numerical selection. You can use the number keys uh, or number pad, of which I'm not going to touch because that's where my shortcuts are at, 
uh, to input an item in the list to select. For example, number one will select the first item and so on. If you if the menu content is too large to fit in the screen, uh, small menus uh, small menu scrolling indicator uh, triangle appears on the bottom of, or the top menu. Scrolling it down <coughs> moving by moving the mouse below or above the scrolling indicator. And what the hell happened to my music? What did the sound stop? Okay, just YouTube having a small hiccup just there for some reason. But it should be starting back again soon. Do let me know if the volume of the, of my little ambient testing music is loud. Let's see... Shortcuts! Use wheel uh, while moving with the mouse. Arrow keys can can be used to navigate. Each menu item has an underlying characteristic, which can be pressed to activate it. This is why I, when I do my Unreal tutorials, I let Jim do most of the reading. I am bad at this uh, reading. Hello there, Sofia Perez. How you doing? Number keys or number pad can be used to access menu items, where one is the first item, choose the second, etc. For large menus, Alt 1, uh, D11, up to Alt 0, the 20th. Press return to activate the selected uh, uh, menu item which I don't know why I would do that, but then again, I'm pretty sure there are some that just use the keyboard. I don't know who would do that, but I know there are some out there that are keyboard only. Press escape to cancel the menu or move the mouse cursor uh, away from the pop-up or by a left uh, this mouse button clicking anywhere out of it. Header menu. <clears throat> Most headers uh, exhibit a set of menus located on, at the start of the header. Header menus are used to configure the editor and access tools. All the menu um, entries show the relevant shortcut keys. Uh, I think I skip some of these actually because collapsing menu, self explanatory. I want to know what each actual thing does. Which, what each of these actually do. So, let's see. Context menu. Special menu. Okay, now, here's something I've not seen. Is that the, most of this is pretty common, pretty much anything. Like popover menus, context menus. And most of the stuff I'm gonna skip, skip because I don't feel it's relevant. Or well, I want you to learn how to use the tools so I can actually start making something on Blender. The special pop-up menu contains a uh, context sensitive, sensitive, excuse me context-sensitive list of operators. It is opened by a button with a down arrow on, on the dark background. Down arrow on the dark background, okay. Pipe menu. Uh, pipe menu is a menu whose items are spread uh, radially around the mouse of which how do I access this that you're telling me this exists but you're not telling me how to access it what button triggers this that would be nice to know 
especially if, like if I'm trying to use like multiple tools at once you hit the key select it quickly instead of just hovering all the way over to where it actually is you know the other menus will be drop down pop up or any anything else so flying Interactive uh, interaction. The pipe menu is spawned by a press by a key press, which is listed on the add-ons document documentation of which I don't recall seeing it actually. Here's everything I've gone through so far. Oh, there it is. Add-ons. That's further up ahead, apparently. So, I guess it, it would be nice if it would tell me right here. I mean, it's mentioned it here. But it would be nice if it told me right the uh, what button it is here right now. I mean, if you're going to mention it, at least tell me how to use it at least once. Tip. Faster way to operate the pipe menu is to press down keys to invoke the menu. Then move mouse slightly towards the direction and release the key to activate the, the selection. Let me know if the music is a bit loud and you guys probably can't hear me properly. Um, since after this is the first time I'm actually putting music on stream. Right now it's just ambient music. I didn't want like anything with, with lyrics running in the background while I'm reading. Releasing the key without moving the mouse will keep the menu open and the user can then move the mouse pointer towards the direction of the pipe uh, menu, pipe menu item and select it by clicking. Releasing the key after moving the mouse towards the pie menu uh, item will cause the menu to close and select the item to activate which I, so that's pretty well I'll do most of, most of the time like hold down, hover it, let go, okay it's selected. That's probably what I'll do once I start using this when I get to actually using it. I never used Blender before, I need to learn how to. Um, and open this widget at the center of the pie me menu shows the direction, the current direction of the pie menu. The selected item is also highlighted. Uh, highlighted. A pie menu will only have a valid direction for item, select, for item selection. If the mouse is touching or extending beyond the disk widget at the center of the menu, Pi menu item supports key, accel key accelerators, which are um, which are the letters underlined on each menu item. Also, number keys can be used to select the items. Wait, what? Let me have a look at that. Ah, okay, okay, I think I get it now. So, even if my mouse is, like, say, like, right here when it's open, if I hit the first letter that's, like, has a line underneath it, it will be selected. Or if you hit one of the numbers that has on the side, it will be selected. I'll prefer to use the mouse. I feel that like that might be the better option. If there are sub pies available, this... It is indicated by a plus icon, which is not visible right here. I wouldn't really know where that plus icon actually is. Huh? Eyedropper. The eyedropper pipette icon allows you to sample for um, anywhere in Blender window the eyedropper can be used to select different kinds of data. Color. This is the most common usage. Uh, the eyedropper is used to sample the pixel colors for um, 
anywhere within Blender, called a ramp. Dragging the cursor over the window to sample a line which is converted into a color ramp. Object Object Data. This is used with object buttons such as Parent, Constraint or Modifier. To select an object from a 3D view, uh, viewport or outliner. Of which I have not gone to either of those. Camera Depth. Number, fee number fields effect affecting distance can also be used can also use the eyedropper. This is used to set the camera depth, the field so the camera depth of field so the depth chosen is in focus. E will activate the eyedropper while hovering over the while hovering over the button. Left click, ma left mouse uh, button dragging will mix the colors you drag over, which can be, which can help when sampling no noisy imagery. I'm guessing that would be in the case of having an image with a lot of details and a lot of color variety. Spacebar resets and starts mixing the colors again. I'm curious about that. Excuse me real quick. Uh, let me hide the browser for a second. What button was it again? Okay, must be because I don't have a, a project started. Because I am hitting E, it ain't working. Must be because I don't exactly have a uh, I don't have uh, any project like actually open. Let me put the browser back on screen real quick. And move on to the next one. I guess I'll know more about it once I get to a section where I actually use it. Let's see. Decorators. Decorators are small buttons that appear to the right of the buttons and show uh, the state of the property. Decorators may appear next to number fields menus and checkbox to indicate the property can be animated. It's just talking about this on the side and these are the numbers. Clicking on the decorator dot icon will add a keyframe to the property which uh, click the rhombus uh, rhombus icon again will remove the keyframe. A solid rhombus icon indicates there is a keyframe on the current frame, while a non solid rhombus icon indicates that the property has a keyframe on another frame. Clicking on non solid rhombus icon will add a keyframe to the current property value and frame. If a property is being driven by another property, then the decorator shows the driver icon. Decorators make it quick and easy to glance over properties and see the state of the properties. So yeah, it is sort of talking about this. So here's the rhombus, which is actually filled in. So, did I speak about this arrow thing, though? See, also see state of colors, of which is probably further up ahead, or something I already did. Data block menu. Let's see. Let me drink some 
water first real quick. Gotta keep myself hydrated. As you, you guys shoot as well. A set of many buttons used to link data blocks to each to each other. If data blocks are linked, uh, data will be uploaded across all uh, of the data user when edited. Type shows the icon indicator that data block type. It opens up the following pop-up menu. The data block can be dragged from the EG to drag a material onto the object in a 3D viewport or into a data ID field. So it's either an object or a material. Oh, actually, because you put some on the um, uh, on the viewport, well, material is something you would put on the thing you just put in the viewport. From my understanding, list a list of data blocks on available in the current blend file, or a link to select in an item from. The menu may show a preview besides the item and a search field to search the item in the list by name. In other words, this that's visible here. Name. Displays the internal name of the linked data block, which can be edited as a regular text file. If the name is already assigned, Blender will add a digit to the name like 00.001. User count displays the number of data users that uh, of the data. Clicking on the count will make it a single user copy with with it linked only to the Active object, object data, object's data, fake user shield icon, keeps the data locked safe in the blend file, even if it has no real use, when activated an F will be shown before the name of the, for the name in the list. Okay. Would love if you tell me what the purpose of that is. Well, unless it's gonna tell me it's later down the line. Make local chain icon. To do. To put is less than. Okay, this doesn't tell me anything. I don't know what the hell this is supposed to refer to. What is this supposed to mean? I know this is normally used as to do. But less than 2.79? What is that supposed to mean? Blender, a brief description of this would have been welcome here. Hopefully, they explain this further down the line. Hopefully. Sometimes they won't. New add icon. Find it, a new data block or duplicate of current data block and applies, applies it. Open a file browser. Unpack file ba file bin icon. Unpack the file packed onto the current blend file to external ones. Unlink block X. Clears uh, the link shift less mouse button to to set the user to zero, allowing the data to be fully deleted from the blend file. Sometimes there's a list of applied data blocks, such as a list of materials used on the object. Also see data blocks are dis discussed further in the data s system chapter, of which is I believe is somewhere on this side actually. 
Maybe later down the line or within one of these. Okay, here's a preview. In a in the tool setting is a version of the data block menu. Uh with a bigger preview. And I think I've seen bugged again. Come on YouTube, you're the ones providing this music. Why not let it work? Please. Let it run this on the background, YouTube. Data ID. What are you learning how to do? I'm learning Blender. Well, first Blender. For roughly an hour, to an hour and a half to two hours. Afterwards, I'll be switching over to Krita. I hope I'm running this properly, which is a free Photoshop-like software according to my brother. Because I can't pay for Photoshop. <laughs> yep, first time. Data ID. A data ID is a text field with an icon that on the left, which opens opens um, po a pop-up. Data ID is unique name for an object. Data ID is used to, ref to refer to objects and therefore Blender does not allow any two objects of same type to have this, the same ID, same name. I'm running Blender as well. Well, welcome aboard because I'm gonna be go going through their tutorials as much as I can to hopefully eventually start actually making some something myself. So maybe we can learn together. <laughs> if they if data ID is already in use, Blender will automatically append a number to the end to prevent ID collision. For example, cube.001 which makes sense. I think Unreal does something very similar, but just puts straight up like cube 1, cube 2, and so on and so forth. Menu showing data IDs can show the following elements. The icon on the left uh, specifies the aspect uh, data block type, which is not Really visible here. Unless it's talking about this. Name, result explanatory, the text field functions as a search field by matching elements in the list. Press tab to autocomplete names up on the level to match stuff. To match is found. If more than one match exists, you have to continue typing. If the type, uh, if you type an invalid name, the value will remain unchanged. List lets you select the data block directly. Eyedropper, which I couldn't get to work for some reason when I tried it. In some data IDs, there are an there is an eyedropper available through the uh, high pet icon on the right side. I probably look serious and I didn't work when I tested it just now. It's because I don't have an actual project ongoing right now. Uh, remove X clicks. Uh, click the X, so yeah, it's just pretty much closing it. Sub ID. Related type of IDs may become available to select a property or child object depending on the object type. Let's see, target, cube, vertex group, V group, target. Armature bone. Hmm. I think it 
This explains only the this and the bone. But what the relation is between these two, I don't really get it. If the uh, vertex group, if the selected object in the name field is a mesh or a or a latins, latis, latis. I cannot pronounce this, sorry. English is my second language, so some words uh, I'm gonna struggle with, and this word I've not seen. I don't know how to pronounce. Latis? Latis? Uh, I cannot pronounce this, sorry. An additional field is displayed where the ver vertex group can be selected. If the selected object in the name field is an armature, which I don't know what an armature is, uh, a new field is displayed, offering the choice to, sp to specify an individual bone by entering its name in the bone data ID. Head tail if the bone is set a new field in displayed offering the choice of whether the head or tail of the bone will be pointed at the will be pointed at the, the slider defines when along this bone the point lies interpolating along the bone axis in a straight line. I th I'm guessing once I start getting to actually rig in, is when I'm actually going to start understanding much of this. I don't really know what it's actually talking about. <laughs> a value of zero will point at the head root of a bone, while the value of one will point at the tail tip of the bone. Use B bone shape. When the bone is, is is a bendy bone, a bendy bone. Click on, a, on this button to make the point follow the curvature of the B spine uh, between head and tail. Yeah, I think I'm not. I don't understand much of this. I'm probably gonna catch you that once I catch you the rigging section of this tutorial, which will probably be animation and rigging, where I'll start actually seeing the, this whole bone stuff and using this in particular. List view and preset. List view. The this controls the. Um, this control is useful to manage list of items. They can be found, for example, in the object data properties. In addition to the main, main list, there is a filtering panel on the bottom, on the bottom, hidden by default, and modifications button on the right. Filtering panel on the button, hidden by default. I'm guessing it's talking about maybe this here. Uh, let's see, select, select an item, rename, resize, these are pretty much self-explanatory. I mean, select and rename is used on pretty much everything. Besides, the list view can be resized. This is just going to the edges and just moving it. Filter, click to show filter options. But button triangle on the bottom left to show the hidden filter option panel. And what the hell happened to music now? Oh, I just switching to another one on my on the YouTube playlist. Uh, search, type the part of the item list. Okay, this one's self-explanatory. Filter include. When 
the magnifying glass icon has a plus sign then only items that match the text will be displayed filter exclude when the magnifying glass icon is a minus sign then only the item that do not match the text will be displayed it's actually the first time I see something like this normally when you're using a filter to find the match not what doesn't match uh, does anybody use that? it sounds counterintuitive but whenever I use a filter I type what I'm looking for not what I'm not looking for Sort, sort, uh, list items alphabetically or in verse, which are self-explanatory. On the right of the list, there are a, there are list modification buttons. Add, add a new item, remove, special. A special menu will, a, spe a special menu with tools to operate on list entities. Move up and down. Preset. Uh, selector. A list of available presets. A uh, selection will overwrite the uh, included properties. Add, of course, as a new preset. Remove special again. I guess like presets are th things that you made before or on the side to determine uh, the values of, of some parameters on an object similar to what I've seen in Unity I believe and I believe in Unreal just that those are like prefabs in a way the color clicker I think many of us have seen this already so I think I'm gonna Skip this, because uh, who hasn't seen this before? The color picking wheel. Anyone that does art has seen this. Even if you use paint, you're probably seeing a similar item of this when selecting a color. Okay, I haven't seen this on other things that you've seen even paint. I think on Ward, when you're selecting a color for a for the letters, you get you've should have seen something similar to this of be this circle or um, a bar up on top with just have different gradients on down a bit down the middle so I'm gonna see if there's anything like new this, this is like anyone that's coming into blender probably or perhaps already seen this would be blender even Krita as well or even Photoshop this is in a case that you know the values and again, the eyedropper, of which I still have no idea how it works. Oh, in Blender, the hex and HSV, HSL values are automatically gamma corrected. However, for the RGB values, they are in scenes linear, color space, linear color space, and are therefore not gamma corrected. For more information, check the color managing and exposure which that I believe is later down the line when it comes to probably the painting part which is actually good to know I, I, if I'm if I am using hex and this as visual visible here then it will be am I corrected but the other one the RGB won't be and that actually affects the tones of the color and Here's someone I'm more familiar with because I have used this before, and not even <laughs> I've I've used it on paint. I've used it on wart, surprisingly enough. So I think I can skip this. I much more prefer this. I'm not gonna lie, over the square one. But this is the one I've seen the most. This is almost the the default one. And there's the options I was thinking about. Uh, shortcuts 
uh, don't think I'm gonna bother with the sugars because once I select, I'll probably just close the window entirely. Unless I'm gonna be using it like a lot. So let's move on to the next one because that everyone coming to Blender should already know that or should have seen it at least on some other software like again, Paint. Most people the first art software they use is Paint. I mean, I did. Not the first thing I ever did any form, sort of drawing on a computer. Well, it was a long time ago. I think it was even before Photoshop was a thing. Let's see. Color ramp widget. Uh, again, with this. Then again. Color ramp, uh, color ramp enables the user to specify the range of color based on the colors stops color stops are similar to the mark indicate indicating where exactly the chosen color should be in intervals from each of the stops added to the ramp is the result of a color interpolation and chosen interpolation method what I'm seeing here that makes me see what this is meaning is transparency of the color actually because right here is the color you cannot see it straight out like it is fully transparent well all the way out here it's actually fully visible but that, because whenever you see the, these square stuff that's where it's into that's transparency uh, of course add delete special which is not properly explained the color ramp puts the gradient in ver inverting the value of the color ramp of which I don't know why you would I well I'll see once I actually start using it I don't really know why you why you would invert it. Uh, distribute stop from left. Distributes the stops uh, so that every step has the same space to the right. This is mostly useful when used with constant in interpolation mode. And give me just a second, something is wrong over on the OBS. And of course the YouTube just decided to stop transmitting the music for some weird reason. It automatically paused it, of which I don't want that. Okay, OBS is still working. Vstream and Cake is still working. Since that there's trouble on YouTube site again. I don't know what's wrong with YouTube lately. It has not been cooperating with me lately. It just cut me off from my chat just now. And it reconnected, unfortunately. But it disconnected me from my, my own chat just a moment ago. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm going to have to probably go up if there's anything actually going on over on YouTube side. I don't know what's going on there. Even lately it's been causing me some delays on the stream while well, on belief on kick and V stream everything's working just fine. I, I know V stream is working just fine. I take a quick look at it. Okay, it's right where I'm at. Good. Blend, uh, kick is a little harder because uh, my laptop screen is smaller and I can barely see the preview on it and I can't make it bigger no matter how much I try. And it's not without hiding all three of my chats. Okay, where was I again? Okay, I think I did the distribute left. Distri distribute stop evenly. Spreads between all neighboring stops become equal. I guess I'll understand more what this is talking about when I actually start using it. I'm not entirely understanding this. Or once I get to on one of the more advanced stuff, where hopefully it gets more practical. Uh, dropper. Pipette icon, which I know it's gonna be explained with further detail elsewhere. 
He set color ramp, presets the color ramp uh, to its default state, color mode, uh, which is the RGB and the HSV and HSL, which I would love to know what they actually stand for. Blender's color by RGB's blender's color by mixing each color channel by and combining HSV HSL blends color by first converting the HSV or HSL mixing then combining again this has the advantage of maintaining saturation between different divorce where RGB would desaturate this allows for richer gradients hmm, so better than RGB I guess I don't know what I would favor once I actually start coloring something but then again if I do start coloring something I'll probably make my textures over in Krita which is why I want to learn it so I can actually make the textures for whatever I make here RGB B spy uh, wait no I skipped this interpolation options enables the user to choose the type of calculation for the color interpolation of each color stop RGB B B spline uses the B spline interpolation for the color stop can but that doesn't tell me what it is. Cardinal, linear, ease, and constant. I'm not an artist, so it's hard for me to actually understand what this is. I, I don't know what this plane is. And HSV and HSL. Clockwise, counterclockwise, near, or far, of which I'm not entirely sure what it's actually referring to again. Maybe once I get to the coloring, it actually explains it to me, and hopefully it does. After color stop and index of the active color stop shows a dasher line allows you to change the active color when colors may be too close to easily select with a cursor. Position. This slider controls the position of the selected color stop in the range. Color opens and color picker the for for the user to specify the color and alpha the, uh, for the selected color stop. When the color is using alpha, the color field is then divided in two. This is with the left side showing the base, uh, the base color, and the right side showing the color with the alpha value. Okay. Is this referring to like this right here? Uh, shortcuts. Control this one at a new control point. Let's move on. Let me drink some water real quick. I'm not going to interrupt my dog from barking because there's, I'm pretty sure there's someone outside uh, during this time of hour. There's been people wandering the streets lately. It is, well, pretty much the holidays. There's a lot of people on vacation right now. That's driving the ducks crazy. Uh, color palette, I mean, who hasn't seen this? Who hasn't seen this? I'm gonna skip this because, seriously, who hasn't seen a color palette? Ooh, okay, now here's something I don't think I've ever seen. Curve widget. The 
purpose of the curve widget is to allow the user to modify an input such as an Im such as an image in an intuitive manner by smoothly adjusting the value uh, up and down using the curve. The input values are mapped uh, on the x-axis of the graph and output value of the map to the y-axis and for those wondering that doggo barking in the background is my dad's chihuahua so you can imagine why it's going mental <clears throat> it's a chihuahua control point <clears throat> Like all curves in Blender, the curve of the curve widget is controlled using control point. By default, there are two control points. One at 0.0, 0, 0.0, and one at 1.1, 1.1. Meaning the input is mapped directly to the output unchanged and for those that don't know what it's referring to this would be 0, 0.0 right here and this would be 1.1 .1 up here if uh, if this is following that formula that is Just like this one is the one selected it's a 0.5 which is a metal so yes yeah, this will be 1.1 .1, this will be 0, 0.0 right there based on this coordinate shown How will it affect the image? I don't know yet. Once I get to it, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, I was right here. Move simply, click and drag, um, drag it around. Add, click anywhere on the curve uh, where there. Oh crap. Okay, hang on just a second. Something is wrong with my laptop's uh, Wi-Fi. Um, I don't know what's wrong with my Wi-Fi just now. I is the stream still going? Uh, I'm gonna look at OBS real quick, so if anyone ch uh, writes anything, I'll be able to see it. So give me a, a second. Uh, I would love to know if anyone's in the chat if the stream is still going well uh, while well, I check what's wrong with my laptop because mo most of my chats are over there or well, have everything else open or well, I have the browser open I cannot see my chats on OBS I cannot see OBS all together because I don't have a second one I only have one so I have to improvise i um, going to reset my laptop's Wi-Fi real quick. Maybe that'll fix it. It has happened before where I've been forced to reset the Wi-Fi there in order to fix it. Okay, hopefully that got rid of the problem. If the problem still persists, then I might need to send a message over to either my brother or my dad to check the device itself. Which might cause problems to the stream itself as well. If they do. But right now the only problem is Wi-Fi itself. Uh, as long as it's the stream still going well. I guess it's fine. Okay. I am recording this. And this will be up on YouTube and Vstream. I'm going to upload it to both. Uh, of course separately. Like, there'll be a video for Blender, another video for Krita. Okay, everything seems to be working now over my laptop. Sorry about that. Let's carry on now, shall we? Now, where did I left off again? Oh, right here, adding the points. Uh, remove, select it, select it, and click on the X button at the top, uh, top right. Oh, okay. I thought this would actually close this whole thing entirely, but no, it's saying that click this and this point will just disappear. Okay. Let's see, controls. Uh, above the curve graph is a row of control 
uh, controls. These are zoom in, uh, plus ma magnifying glass icon, zooms into the center of the graph. It's shown more, it shows more details and provides more accurate control to navigate around the curve while zoomed in click and drag the empty part of of the graph zoom out zoom out the graph to show fewer details and view the graph as a whole you cannot zoom out further than the clip region Special, which again we still don't know. We only know it's just special tools. Uh, maybe these are some of them actually. Reset, uh, reset the view of the curve. Handle options controls how the control point affects the curve shape. It determines the interpolation of the curve uh, segment at the selected control point. Vector handle. Vector handles creates uh, straight lines, uh, breaking the tangent uh, at the at the curve the curve handle, making it an an angle. Uh, out auto handle, automatic handles the that create smooth curves. My handles that create smooth curves. Okay, this sounds a little bit wrong. I mean, automatic handles that create smooth curves. That, this, that's what's throwing me off right now. And of course, YouTube, what the hell? Carry on to the next one. It's working fine when I was testing it today, but now it just doesn't want to cooperate, apparently. Okay. that That's throwing me off, honestly. I feel like there's something wrong there. Auto clamped handle. Automatically handles that create smooth curves, which prevents overshoot. Again, with that create. That... This is throwing me off a lot. I don't know why. Pre-handle. The handle can be moved uh, completely independently and thus the result is in the sharp change of direction. Aligned free handle. The two handles of the curve point are locked together to always point in exactly opposite direction. This results in the curve that is always smooth at the control point. And here are the examples. This image kind of makes a bit more sense now. Extend option controls the controls how the curve is e extended before the first control point and after the last control point. Uh, extend horizon causes the curve to lay horizontal before the first uh, point and after the last point. In other words, like something like this. Extend extrapolate causes the curve to e to extrapolate before the first point and after the last point based on the shape of the curve. You know what's oh okay here's an example like before and after right here. In this case I guess it's just that way it's bending it'll also bend like after and before it. Reset curve. Reset the curves to default. Remove all points added to the curve. 
clipping option dot icon use clipping uh, for curve points to stay between specific values that can be handy I think minimum X and Y and max X and Y so I say minimum and maximum bound of the curve like for example if I wanted this to stay like right here right in this range like don't go above that but don't go below this so that will make it so like if I pull it up I won't go past that point if I pull it down it won't pass that go past that point delete of course just just getting rid of it by pressing the X button uh, the first and last point cannot be deleted so I couldn't delete them anytime I put it in the middle I cannot delete this one and this one X, Y, the coordinates of the selected control point. Copy, paste. The whole curve can be copied for from one curve widget to another by covering, by hovering over the curve graph and pressing the control C and control V. Okay, the search like this is been mentioned on several of them like to find by keyword or ID on the different menus so I'm gonna skip this because I mean who hasn't done something like this before when I want to use a computer has used a search function pretty much Although operator search mode or modes menu Edit menu search. When developers extras are activated, uh, an operator search can be accessed from the edit menu in the toolbar. The search menu searches all operators within Blender even if they are not exposed in the menu. This is useful for Python developers for testing purposes so this last one operator search is for ac actual software developers not for people that are using blender for what I intend to use it and let's see notes oh my god notes is actually long I don't know what it's referring to so let's hop on right into it also, might as well look at my timer. Okay, if I'm going go for an hour, I can still go for a little while longer and on this thing. Oh boy. Introduction. The different node editors are used to work with node-based workflow. Each node editor type has its own specific purpose. Therefore, this section only explains how to work with nodes in general. In the list below, uh, it shows the list of different types of nodes, node trees, and where each is documented. In other words, this is just a brief explanation, and once I get to actually messing with a node, so I'm actually going to get a more in depth explanation of it. I'm not going to bit this kind of looks a bit chaotic. Let's see. Icon name. Shader node. Composite node and texture node. Editor interface. Header. The header contains various menu buttons and options. Partially based on the current node, node trees type. View this menu changes your view of the editor. Select this menu allows you to select a node in, or group of nodes. Oh, they can be grouped. That's actually good to know. Add this allows you to add a node. Note this menu allows you to do things with selected node, in other words, edit it. Use. 
use nodes. Tells the render engine to use a node tree when capturing the material color or rendering the final image. Or not. If not, the tree is ignored for materials. This is most, mostly a legacy option because in the past material could not be created with no trees. But I guess now they actually can now. Which sounds familiar. I think I did something similar over on um, Unreal when I was putting texture to an object. Use pinned. When enabled, the editor will retain the material or texture even when the user selects a different object. A node tree will. An, a node tree can then be edited independently of the object selected in the 3D viewport. Okay, that's actually good to know. Parent node tree. This button allows uh, allows you uh, go to parent node tree, e.g., leaving a group. Snapping changes options for snapping nodes uh, position to active and clear node tree layout. Toolbar. The toolbar contains a select uh, set of tools that can be used in the node editor. Sidebar. The sidebar region contains properties for the current selected node, as well as node editor specific settings. Navigation. Navigation, uh, navigating the node editor is done with the use of both mouse movement and keyboard shortcuts. Pan, middle mouse button moves the view up and down, left and right. Zoom, Control metal mouse wheel, metal mouse button or the wheel. I'll probably be using the wheel. Move the camera forward or backwards. Frame select number pad period. Shit. Not gonna use it because that period has, serves another purpose. On <laughs> until I can get my hands on the stream deck, I my number pads my shortcuts section. Uh, adjust the zoom to fit only the selected node in the viewpoint. Frame all home. Adjust the zoom to fit all nodes in the view. Adding notes. Notes are added via the add menu or using shift A shortcut. Now let's see, note parts. Okay. <laughs> I can't help but look at the image right there. <laughs> so, 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 oh my god, that's amazing. Excellent pick for the example. <laughs> it looks so good. All notes in Blender are based on a similar cons construction. This applies to any type of note. This part includes the title, so the title, socket, preview, and more. Title. The title shows the name, last type of the note. It can be overwritten by changing the value of label in the note section uh, of the sidebar region. And on the left side of the title is the collapse toggle, which can be used to collapse the node. This can also be done with H. Only H would be HELP! <laughs> okay, how a node appears when collapse? Pretty normal. Sockets. The socket input and output value from the node from the node. They appear 
as little colored circles on either side of the note. Unused sockets can be hidden with Control H. There are two kinds of sockets, input and output. Each socket is colored is color coded depending on what type of data it handles. Which we're seeing the example right here. A float gray indicates numeric values information. It can either be a single numeric value or a so called value map. You can think of a value map as a grayscale map where the different amount of bright dark reflect, reflects the value of each point. If a single value is used as an input for a value map, so, map socket, all points of the map are sent to this same value, common use. Alpha maps and value options for the node. Vector bl vector blue indicates vector coordinates and normal information. Color yellow indicates that color information needed to uh, to the input or while the output uh, for the node. Depending on the node tree type, the color has an alpha channel or not. Shaders, bright green, used for shaders in Cycles and Eevee. What the hell does a Pokemon have to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Boolean, soft yellow, used to pass true or false values. Integer. Used to pass integer values. String, dark gray. Used to pass a string value. Object, dark red. Used to pass an object data block. Image, uh, used to pass the image data block. Input. The inputs are located on bottom left side of the node. The provide and provide the data uh, the node uh, needs to perform its function. Each input socket, extent, except for the green uh, shader input, uh, when disconnected, has a default value which can be edited via the color, by a color numeric or vector interface input. In the screen of nodes above, the color, the second color option is set by the color interface point. Let's go back to that. And if you're talking about this one, this one, or, or this one. You see, output. I've got the input. Why does the shader not have that? Why does the shader not have a default? That part doesn't make sense to me, but I guess we'll catch you it once we actually catch you the actual notes themselves. Output. The output are located on the top right side of the note and can be connected to the input of notes further down the note tree. Properties. Many nodes have settings which can affect the way <coughs> they interact with inputs and outputs. Nodes with settings are located below the output and above any input. Okay, so just I guess in this referring to these parameters right here, but I don't even know what these parameters are about. Preview. On some nodes, this shows a preview image of how the output data 
uh, for this for a certain channel will appear. Usually it shows color data. The preview can be toggled using the icon on the very top right hand corner of the note next to the title. Okay, then selecting a box select. Click and drag the box, so select multiple nodes. Uh, alternatively, uh, B uh, starts the bounding box, select process, uh, process as well. Lasso select. That's has something I should know. I know about the box select, but lasso select. This is the first I actually hear about this. Click and drag. Uh, starts and lasso select. Control Alt Left Mouse button. That doesn't tell me much. Select all. A. Okay, with A, I select everything. Deselect all. Alt A. Inverse. Inverse the selection. Hopefully later it tells me what inverse actually means. Select lead from L. Expands the selection to nodes which are linked to input uh, to inputs of the currently selected node. Select link two. Okay, so that's a link from and then link two shift L. Expands the selected the selection to nodes which are linked to the output of the currently selected node. Okay. Select group uh, shift G. Select similar nodes to the active node by properties. Type the note type, e.g. all math notes, color, the color property, prefix, suffix, never heard of suffix, matches the name property from start to end uh, of the text. Activate same type previous next. Finds the previous next node of the same, of the same type. Activates the node and ensures the node uh, is visible. Find node. Control F. Okay, who hasn't done Control F to look for something even on a website? I mainly use that on websites when I'm looking for like guides of particular words and I like want to skip straight to the point. To search for a node on selecting a node. It activates the node and makes sure the node is visible. Select multiple. Shift left mouse button or shift right mouse button. Used for multiple node selection. Same as selecting multiple files. But I think sometimes it's actually control not shift. I can't remember right now. Arranging nodes. Snapping. Snap, to uh, snap toggle snapping mode to for moving notes around. Now I will probably use that if I want all notes are related to each other to be at, like at the same height. Snap node element selector. The selector provides uh, the following node element to snap. Red snaps the grid background. Node X snaps the left right node borders. N node Y snaps top bottom node border. XY snaps uh, to any node border. Snap target. Which which part to snap to? Uh, the target closest snaps closest point into the target center snaps to the center um onto the target 
medium snap shoot a medium to target active snap should be active on shoot the target auto offset when you drop a node with uh, with at least one input and and one output uh, socket into the existing connection between two nodes auto offset will de depending on the direction setting automatically move the left and right node uh, away and make room for the neck for the new node auto offset is a feature that helps organize node layout interact interactively without interrupting the user workflow. Auto offset is enabled by default, but it can be disabled from the error header header. Which is which here? I guess in this one down here is like the off auto offset one. You can toggle the offset direction while you are moving uh, the node by pressing T. The offset mar uh, margin can be changed using the auto offset margin setting in the editing section of the preference. And there's an example video, but I'm not gonna open that. I don't wanna get into trouble. And let me drink some water before I continue with the editing section. Also, I better keep track of how long I've been going so I leave time for the Krita part of the stream. Okay, I'm good. I can still go on for a little while longer. Editing. Transform. Moves a single node by clicking and dragging it around a node can be clicked almost anywhere to start dragging multiple nodes can be moved uh, after pressing G in general it is recommended to arrange your notes within the views such as the data flow from left to right top to bottom a node can be resize by dragging the edges on the left or right side. Connecting sockets uh, interactively. Let's mouse, mouse button click uh, on the socket and drag it and drag. You will see a line coming out of it. This is called a link. Keep dragging and connect the link on to the input socket of another node and release the left mouse button. When multiple links can uh, can route out of a, out of an output socket, only a single link can be attached to an input socket. But if only a single one can be connected, then why would you be able to do multiple output sockets when only one is going to work? I guess I'll know more about it once I get to the actual more in-depth part of the nodes. This is more of like the overview of it. To, rep to reposition the outgoing links of the nodes rather than adding a new one, Hold control while dragging from the output socket. This works uh, for sing uh, for single as well as for multiple outgoing links. But if I can have multiple outgoing links, but it says up here that it can only attach to one input socket. Why we? What would be the purpose of multiple outgoing links? What is there something else it can connect to that should have probably mentioned? I don't get that one. Nodes that have no connection can be in 
insert it on a link. Just move the node over to over the link and release when the link is highlighted. Make link F. Select multiple nodes with the open socket, then you use a make link to create link between them. Use make link as if you are uh, if you're if there are other nodes which can be connected. Make a replace link. Make an replace link uh, works similar to make links to make links, but it will replace existing links if any exist. So there is a risk of override when making and replacing. Disconnecting sockets. Interactively drag the link from the input socket and let it go keeping it unconnected. Cut links. To break a link between sockets, click uh, in the empty area near the link. You want to disconnect it uh, disconnect and drag. You will see little outer icons appear at at the mouse pointer. Move it over the link itself and release. Data links. Use data links in order to cut all links attached to selected node at once. I don't know why you would use this unless you're like trying to experiment with multiple nodes or something. I don't know why. I don't know what the purpose of that would be. If you delete the nodes, will automatically be disconnected? I'm assuming. If you like trying to get rid of a node in particular, unless there's something that keeps it from deleting if it's connected to something. Sort of to avoid doing something you actually don't want to delete. Duplicate. Click left mouse button or right the uh, uh, mouse button. On the desired node, press Shift D and move the mouse away from. Wait, you see the duplicate uh, of the selected node appearing under the mouse pointer. Note, when you duplicate a note, the new note will be positioned exactly on top of the note that was duplicated. If you have, if you leave it there and it is quite easy to do so, you cannot easily tell what there are, there are two notes there. When it when in doubt, select a note and move it slightly to see if something is hidden underneath. I gotta try and avoid that issue. Copy paste, not only get the selected node but also the connection between them are copied to the clipboard. Note, pasted notes will be placed in the same position as when it was copied. Use the same condition as when duplicating. Okay. Why not want to copy it over where the mouse is located? And then again that would put in like some coding in the way that probably did at that time was not possible. I don't know now. I know some things can do that, but not everything. Uh, mute. Muting a note removes the contribution of the note to the note tree and makes all links uh, bypass through, through that note without change. 
openings will appear red as an indicator of passing through the mute node. Show and hide. Hide collapse. Uh, hide collapses the node, uh, so only the node header is visible. This can be toggled by clicking the triangle at the top left of the node header. Toggle node preview shows hides the preview, which on that. Which on the node uh, that displays the frame after the node's operation has been applied. This can also be toggled by clicking material uh, material ball icon on the node header. Material ball icon. Do I have a node? No, the node except was on the previous one. Whoops. Toggle node options. Shows show height all the node properties. Collapse and hide unused sockets. Hides all the toggle hidden nodes that the socket has been has hidden operations. Layer something I need to get used to when I hop on over to Krita probably. Uh, the tools are only used in the composition. Read render layers, read all the current scene render layers for um, cache as needed as needed. This can be used to save RAM while rendering because the render layer uh, do not have to be saved in RAM. This can also be used to recover some information from a failed render if from this to work safe buffer must be enabled. Okay, We're still quite a ways away but we're ever so closer to finishing the user interface itself then getting over to the editor. Sidebar items, panel, sidebar region, item, node, name, label, color. I feel like this is just starting to repeat a few things. Color preset, color, properties. Properties are shown depending on the type of node selected. Each a mixing different. Okay, not again, YouTube. I need to experiment more with this playlist that YouTube itself provides to avoid copyright. I think it's starting now. It just has a low start. Hopefully it's not too low. Because I did lower the volume on my headset so I can actually hear myself and not actually end up like speaking too loud. Also do let me know if the music is either too loud or too low. It is just ambient sound music just to run in the background. The info in this panel change uh, changes with the selected tool. Annotations, you can select the annotation tools in the toolbar to make annotations in the node editor. Uh, see an annotate tool for more information which is probably somewhere down here there's not much here to really worry about now let's see note groups grouping notes can simplify a note tree by allowing instant Instancing and hiding parts of the tree. Both material and composite nodes can be grouped, which is a good thing. 
I don't have to worry about having a bunch of these like scattered all over the place once I start using mode. If I if ever. Conceptual gru conceptually, grouping nodes allows you to specify a set of nodes that can be treated as though it were just one node. Node groups are similar to functions in programming. They can be reused in many places in the node tree and can be customized by changing a parameter of the node group. Something I will probably rely on once I probably start making my own like 3D avatar. Once I get to that point, I'm in no rush to do so and then if I do, I'll probably end up doing a low poly first so I don't put too much of a burden on my computer unless I somehow miraculously get myself an upgraded computer. If I do go to the 3D model, I'll probably go low poly to keep the use of resources at a minimum. And I'm probably trying to look for someone that actually understands that more to like give me some tips and tricks. Uh, let's see where we go. All right. As an example, if you have created a material that you would like to use with different inputs, e.g., diffuse colors, red plastic, green plastic, you could recreate different materials with with make single use for each different color with a copy of the of the tree. A part describing the plastic material. If you like to edit the material, you would need to redo the edit on all materials and on all materials. A better method of reuse is to create node groups, uh, ex exposing only the, uh, the variable input, e.g. the diffuse color. Also nested nodes groups are supported. Uh, uh, a node group can be inserted or created inside another node group. Okay, this L E I think so, or I E Have you seen this I don't think I've seen that before. Recursive node groups are prohibited uh, for all the current node systems. To prevent infinite uh, recursion, a node group can never contain itself or another group that contains it. That's a pretty good safety measure. I'm pretty sure without that, uh, a lot of people would probably make that mistake, like and just overwriting their, oh, like overwhelming their computer because of that infinite loop. Make group reference all notes menu note mix group hotkey control G to create a node group select a node that wants that want to include then press the control G group plus make group a node group will have been will have a green toolbar all the uh, selected nodes will now be contained within a node group. Default naming of the node group is node group. Node group point one zero zero one etc. There are uh, there is a name field on the node uh, group you can click to change the name of, of the group change the name of the node group to something meaningful when appending node groups for one blend file to another. Blend the 
a blender does not make a distinction between material may no material node groups or composite node groups so it is recommended to use some naming convention that will allow you to easily distinguish between the two types tip what not to include in a node group remember that uh, the essential idea is that a node group should be an easy reusable self-contained software composed um, component material comp uh, component material nodes groups are not included input nodes if uh, if you include a source node in your group you will need to have the source node appearing twice once inside the group and once outside the group in the new material node tree if you include the uh, output node in a group there will not be an output socket available for the group okay. edit group with the node group selected tab expands uh, the node expands the node uh, to a frame and the individual nodes uh, within it are shown are shown you can move them around uh, play with their individual controls rethreads rethread them internally etc just like you can if they were a normal part of an, of the editor view you will not be able to, uh, able though to thread them to a node outside the group you have to use the external socket to on the on the side of the node group while a tab can be used for both uh, enter and exit group Interface Interactivity When the node group is created, new group inputs and group outputs nodes are generated to represent the data flow into the into and out of the group. When created, connections uh, input socket gain coming from unselected nodes will become attached to a new socket on a group out input node Similar similarly outgoing uh, connections to input sockets of unselected nodes will become attached to the new group at a new group output go output node if during node uh, group development an additional parameter needs to be passed into the group an additional socket must be added to the group input node uh, group input node this is easily done by adding a connection from the hollow socket on the right side of the group input nodes to the desired input socket of the node during input the process is similar for the group output regarding what regarding data you want to be made available outside the group and give me a second let me drink some water again Um, 
gonna finish with this part that I'm doing right now and then move on to the next section. Uh, panel. Uh, sockets can be added, reorder, or removed. This, uh, removed it. Descriptive name can be added and a details of the input data value defined here. If you have multiple input or output, you can be reordered by selecting the socket in the list and then moving it up or down with a arrow buttons on the right side of the panel. The large plus sign button below the list will add a unconnected socket of the same type as the socket selected socket or the value if, the, if there is no, no selection. The triangles at the bottom of the list has filtering functions to facilitate finding nodes in the group <coughs> and if the group has a large number of sockets. So what's this? Ungroup. The Control alt g tool removes the group and places the individual nodes onto the editor and uh, your workspace. No internal connections are lost so and so and now you can thread interval nodes uh, to other nodes in the workplace. Uh, separate shell Separate selects nodes of the node group. Copy, of course, copies the node. Move, moves the parent node. Uh, remove from group. Okay, how much was it? Okay, I'm almost at the bottom. Group insert. Select a set of nodes and ending with the destination group node and processing node group insert will move these nodes into that group. The moved node are collecting and collected into a group of their own to preserve their connection context. Having their own group input and output nodes uh, the group existing input and output node are updated with new sockets if any if any from the new nodes the node group must be edited to contain a single group input and a single group output node a pending node groups. Once you have appended a node tree to your blend file, you can make use of it in a node editor by pressing shift A, add plus group, then select the uh, appended group. The control panels of the group includes the individual controls for the group uh, for the group node. You can change them by working with the group node like any other node. And I am gonna leave this part for Blender right there. Still a lot to go through and I'm almost at the two hour mark. So that is gonna be it for this blender section. Uh, for those that are watching the stream, I, it's, the stream isn't over yet. I'm gonna be putting the starting soon screen again and switch over to the Krita section of the stream. I just 
need to put that up so that I can go into studio mode and set the screen capture for that. And open the site as well, where I left off, which I think I remember what I do. As for those watching the video, then you don't have to worry about it. It'll just be the end of the video. <laughs> but anyway, that is gonna be it for this uh, Blender section. I just think it's, I'm gonna pause the music so I can actually use it on the next segment. Uh, Uh, let's see. I uh, will be continuing this next um, next Tuesday. There'll be this will be a Tuesday stream. Uh, let's see. And um, how much do we have? I think I still might have an almost on a full stream to finish one. Finish up the notes. Which some of these are. A little bit on the long side, not so much. And I still need to go through the tool section, which might as well have a look at that. Okay, yeah, the tool sections has a bit of a way to go. So let's go back into the notes. And yeah, here it is. This is where I left off. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be it for now. If anyone has any suggestions, from uh, uh, put in the chat. Or if you're watching the bot or the video that I'll be putting separate, uh, put it down in the description below. And yeah, just a little quick YouTube outro. Uh, well, YouTube is not free streams because it's going up on both. Uh, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope to see you all next time. Bye bye! And recording stopped. There we go. That recording has stopped. Now for those that are watching this live on the stream, I am going to switch over to the starting soon again for a little bit, while I set up the Krita section of the stream. So I'll be right back. Also, I'm pretty much just starting soon because I'm going to start the recording from that point. So I'll be right back. This is for the part where I'm actually starting the recording for the Krita section. For the, uh, if you were to watch this live, this would be the uh, last hour of the stream, pretty much, where I switch from Blender over to Krita. Uh, I'll be putting it up on screen in a second. I'm just having some minor technical difficulties for some weird reason, of which I can't get this 
application should actually open. In the meantime, let me put uh, some background music of which I'm currently experimenting with. One, two, well, this is YouTube provided music, so it shouldn't have copyright issues. And to to like check the volume if it is too loud let me know if it's too low also let me know it's just right now just ambient music like just to set the mood a little bit to, so you just not just hear me just yapping or if i suddenly stay quiet because i'm thinking or something's happened uh, at least it's just not complete utter silence now uh the software is open just let me get the screen capture to work to have that on the background in case that uh, it gets hands-on and I need to actually do something on the editor itself I like having the stuff open just in case also I have the window a little much bigger this time on like the first video uh, just in case so it's more clearly visible just in case but once I get you the actually more practical stuff it is going to be down on down below where it was on the first video. So let me do the transition now. Get off studio mode so I can actually see this properly. And last we left off, we had gone through like this whole color section, which I probably could have skipped it. And we left off on transparency, something I do need to learn once I start like, doing some actual drawings. Whether it be making my a 2D avatar, which I still haven't decided whether well, go 2D or 3D. Probably 2D because of my hardware limitations or a low poly model. I'll, we'll need to talk to someone that actually knows that a little bit more. Uh, hopefully uh, it's good, hopefully you guys can hear me clearly. And for those watching the video, yeah, you don't have to worry about the whole planet part if you're not interested. But uh, if you are, that there is their own separate videos. Or you can watch it for where everything's all together. Also, of course, I'm gonna sell out again. Uh, down in the description below, there is a link to the power shop where you can get energy mixes, sleep mixes, hydration, shakers, and even stickers. If you use credit code BLACKHEART, you will get a 10% discount. And it helps for the channel in the process. Now, on with the actual documentation itself. Now that I am no artist, so even once I get to the more hands-on stuff, expect trash. <laughs> I'm not good at drawing. I'm definitely gonna need a lot of practice, but no, I am really bad. <laughs> I can't draw for shit, but first, I need to learn how to use this Krita software, and it's ins and out, because I have never used uh, so for this, I've never used Photoshop. Why? Because I can't pay for it. <laughs> Photoshop ain't free, so. But Krita is a free alternative. From what my own brother recommended me this. And well, here I am learning it. So here we go on with transparency. Uh, just in case, let me check. Oh yes, okay, everything's good. And we shall go on with this last hour of the stream part. Transparency. Just like red, green, and blue, a computer can also store uh, how transparent a pixel is. And this is important for composing a mentioned before. After all, there is no point in having multiple layers if you can't uh, have transparency. And what the hell just happened? YouTube, don't just reset or cancel. Oh, let me just hop on over to the next one. Maybe that track was bugged or something. Okay, there we go. Transparency is stored in the same way as color, meaning that it is also a channel. We usually call this channel the alpha channel or alpha for short. The reason behind this is that the letter alpha is used to represent uh, to present it in programming. Which uh, how do you even put that letter with a keyboard? How how do you put that letter in programming? I I am a bit I do know a bit programming. I have never seen how to put that actual alpha symbol. What? <laughs> 
Okay, I've probably never seen that being used on programming, but then again, I've, my programming knowledge is a little bit on the basic side. Some older programs don't always have transparency by default. Krita is the opposite. It doesn't understand images that don't track transparency and will always add the transparency channel to images. When a given pixel is completely transparent and all the layers Krita will instead show the check uh, the checkerboard pattern like the rose image shown above which would be this checker pattern blending nodes because colors are stored as numbers you can do math with them you can call this blending nodes or compositing nodes Blending nodes can be done per layer or per brush stroke, and thus the and thus are also part of the composing of of layers. I see that if like you were like using two different colors, so to create like a shadow, but yet maintaining the color itself or something like that. I don't know, or I won't know m until I actually give it a try. Mm, multiply a commonly used blending mode. It is is for example multiply, which multiplies the components, leading to darker colors. This allows you to simulate the subtractive mixing and thus makes painting shadows easier. That's exactly what I meant by that. Adding. Another common one is addition, which adds one layer component to another, making a perfect uh, make it perfect for special glow effects. Okay, that's interesting. Erasing is uh, blending mode in Krita, there is no eraser tool, but you can toggle on the brush quickly with the E uh, key to, be e key, uh, to become an eraser. You can also use it on layers. Unlike other blending nodes, this one only affects the alpha channel making things more transparent i guess you would use this if you like put something you drew on top of another and you want to kind of see a little bit what's beneath it and, but not entirely but you want like somebody to still like show off like wet clothes for instance like you can't see some of the clothes but you can see what's underneath it normal Normal blend mode just averages between colors depending on how transparent the topmost color is. Greta has 76 blending modes. Damn! Is that another too many? Each doing slightly different things. Head over to the blending mode to learn more. Because we can see channels as grayscale images. We can convert grayscale images into channels. Like, for example, we can use a grayscale image for the transparency. We can call this mask, of which we are about to look go into. Ooh, okay, this actually looks really nice. <laughs> Do not expect me to draw something like that. If I try, it'll look horrendous. Masks are the type of sub-effect applied um, to layers, usually driven by a grayscale image. The primary type of masks are transparency masks, which allow you to use a grayscale image to determine the transparency, where 
black makes everything transparent and white makes the pixels fully uh, opaque. You can paint on a mask with any of the brushes or convert a normal paint layer to a mask. This big, uh, this big benefit of mask is that you can make things transparent without removing the underlying pixel. Furthermore, you can use mask to reveal or hide a whole group layer at once. For example, we have a white ghost lady here. Yeah, here, like, this should be transparent here in this example. Otherwise, it looks more like an unfinished drawing. But you can't really tell whether she's a ghost lady or just a really, really white. If only we could give the idea that she's, uh, she's, that she floats, we right click the layer and add transparency mask, then we will select the mask and draw with, uh, with a black and white layer uh, gradient so that the black is below. Which would be this. This is what I mean by seeing things underneath it. Without actually getting rid of it. You can still see the ghost, but you can also see what's underneath. Something I may rely on some images I might try. Or, um, like effects. Maybe I can make my flames that you can see, like, on my characters. Uh, somewhat transparent but not entirely you'll still be able to like see them or something wherever the black is there uh, there's a lady f now become transparent turning her into a real ghost Ooh. <laughs> sorry I could help it the name mask comes from traditional masking fluid and film. You may recall the earlier comparison of the section to traditional masking fluid. Select selection two are stored <coughs> are stored internally as grayscale images, and you can save them as a local selection which is kind of like a mas masking or convert them to a transparency mask filters something i might rely on a, bit, a little bit we mentioned earlier that you can do masks with colors but you can also do masks with pixels or groups of pixels or whole or whole layers in fact you can make Krita do all sorts of little operations on layers we can we call this operation filters example e example of such operations are desaturate this makes all pixel turn gray blur this allow, this averages the pixels with their neighbor, which removes sharp contrast and makes the whole image look blurry. Sharpen, this increases the contrast between uh, pixels that had a pretty high contrast to begin with. Color to alpha. A popular filter which makes it all of the colors, uh, all of the chosen colors, transparent. Krita has many more filters available. You can read about them here, of which I won't get you yet because I'm probably not gonna mess with filters early on. 
filter brush engine. Because many of these operations are per pixel, Krita allows you to use the filters as part of a filter brush engine. In most images manipulation uh, software, these are separate tools, but Krita has it as a brush engine, which uh, allowing much more customization than usual. This means you can make a brush that it desaturates pixels or a brush that changes a hue of the pixel underneath. Different filters brush being used on different parts of the image. So here you can kind of see the different effects of the individual filters on different parts of the exactly the same image. Pretty neat. Filter layer, filter mass, and layer styles. Krita also allows you to let the filters be part of it, of the layer, uh, the stack, via filter layer and filter mask. Filter layer affects all the layers underneath in the same hierarchy. Uh, trans transparency and transparency mask on filter layers affect where the layer is applied. Mask on the other hand can affect a single layer and are driven by the grayscale image. They will also affect the layer in a group, much like transparency mask. We can use the filter to make our ghost lady look even more ethereal by selecting the ghost lady's layer and creating a clone layer where the um, where we then right click and add the filter mask and use gauss and blur to set the to 10 or so pixels and let me check what the hell is wrong with youtube and of course you decide to just stop the music altogether sorry about that then the clone layer is then put behind the original layer and set to the blending mode color dodge giving her a def definite spooky glow you can keep on painting on the original layer and everything will get updated automatically. Okay. Might need to experiment with that once I get you that spot because I didn't understand it entirely. Layer effects and layer styles are filters uh, max popularized by Photoshop that are like f are a little faster than regular masks but not as versatile. They are available by right clicking a layer and selecting layer style. Transformation. Transformation are kinds of like are kind of like filters and in that these are operations done on pixels of an image. We have a regular image and layer wide transformation in the image and layer top menu so that you may resize, flip and rotate the whole image. We also have a crop tool, which only affects the canvas uh, canvas size, and uh, more tools, which only moves a given layer. However, if you want more control, Krita often offers a transform tool. 
This one, this is probably the tool it's talking about. I guess this is where the mm, extra control comes from. You can just set the values yourself manually. But I probably won't rely too much of that unless I'm looking for something a little bit too, like, more precise. I'll probably s grab it, set it with the mouse, get as close as I can, and then just finish it editing there. With this tool, you can rotate and resize the canvas, or put in a perspective, or you can use advanced transform tool, like the warp cage and liquefy, which allows you to transform, um, to transform by drawing custom points, or even by representing by pretending it, it it's a transforming brush. Uh, deform brush engine. Like the filter brush engine, Krita also has a deform brush engine, which allows you to, trans uh, to transform with uh, the brush. This deforms the is like a much faster version of the liquify transform tool uh, tool mode but in exchange its results are much more lower quality uh, apple transform into a pair with liquify on the left and the form on the right yeah liquify is better But I do see some uses for the deform one. Let's say you drew like a barrel, but you want to make it look like really beat up, like somebody put a bunch of punches into it, then the deform one would be much better than liquify. Like if it, <laughs> Ryu had a bad day and said you take it out on the on the poor little can. Uh. Furthermore, you can't apply the deform brush as a non-destructive mask. Transform mask. Like filters, transform can be applied as a non-destructive operation that is part of the layer stack. Unlike filters and transparency masks, however, uh, transform masks can't be driven by the grayscale image. The technical reasons uh, you can use Transform X to deform clone and file layer as well. Okay, animations. Animations? Hmm. This might help. If we in the Unreal section we actually go for the chitty stuff, not only could I probably draw the assets for the game here, for the chitty game, but also animate it here as well. That's useful. I don't know much about it, I've never animated anything, that's why I'm kind of clueless at this sort of stuff. From version 3 onwards, Krita got uh, Ross roster animation support. You can use the timeline animation and onion skin uh, docker plus create an amazing variety of brushes to do roster based animation. Export those and then turn them into movie or gifs. Something will probably get you later down the documentation, probably. Assistant, grid, and guides. With all this technical stuff, you might off, uh, forget that Krita is a painting program. Like how when, like how when working with traditional medium, uh, as an illustrator, you can have all sorts of equipment to make drawing easier, Krita also often offers a variety of tools. And 
This is still better than what I would be able to draw. <laughs> Creatures, uh, vanishing point assist in in action. Hopefully, like creature has something that like, you add these like automatically in a way. Like I set the points and it just draws the lines for me, which will be like extremely helpful because I cannot make straight lines properly, and sometimes I can't really make up my mind. And having a tool that automatically adjusts this will be super handy. Uh, let's see, grid and guide docker, a very straightforward guide tool which shows grid and guidelines that can be configured. Sorry, I was just fixing the music just now because for some reason it stopped on its own. I don't know what's wrong with YouTube. When I first started, it was just working just fine, hopping from song to song. Now, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's not doing it. Snapping. Uh, you can snap to all sorts of things. Grids, uh, grids guides, extensions, uh, orthogonal, uh, orthogonals, image center, and bounding boxes. volume on my headset. Uh, I hope that is not too loud for you guys. Uh, my headset is a little bit. Uh, painting with assistant. Because you can hardly put a ruler against with your <laughs> tablet to help you draw, the assistants uh, are there to help you draw uh, concentric cycles, perspective, parallel lines, and other uh, easily forgotten but tricky to draw details that allows you to snap to those via the tool options as well. This is great, I'm probably going to be relying on that quite a bit. These guides are saved into Krita's native format which means you can pick up your work easily afterwards. Customization. This leads the final concept, customization. In addition, uh, rearranging the dockers according to your preferred to your preference, Krita provides a safe uh, and saves your configuration as workplace workspaces. This is a button at the top right. You can also configure the toolbar via settings, configure toolbar, and you well as well as the shortcut upper under the under both setting configure Krita uh, shortcut and setting configure Krita canvas input settings. And that uh, ends the in the basic concept. Now it moves in to the navigations, of which let me see. I think I could probably start. It's only been like twenty-five minutes, so I might as well just yeah carry on. This is still the part of the getting started. Uh, let's see. Oh wow! Great work, Chris. Dude, that looks amazing. Navigation interface. Krita's interface is very flexible and provides a simple choice for the artist to arrange the elements of the workspace. An artist can snap and arrange the elements, much like snapping together Lego blocks. It provides a set of construction kits parts in the form of dockers and toolbars. Every set of elements can be shown hidden 
move and arrange that lets the artist to easily customize their own user interface experience. A tour of the Krita interface. As we've said before, the Krita interface is very malleable and the way that you choose to configure the work su surface may not resemble those shown below, but we can use this as a starting point. A is a traditional file or action menu found in most window applications. B is a toolbar. This is where you can choose your brushes, set parameters such as opacity and size of other up of other settings. Uh, the C is the sidebar for the movable panel uh, move panel docker. In some applications, these are known as dockable areas. Krita also allows you to dock panels at the top or bottom as well. The D, D section is status bar. This space shows up the preferred mode for showing selected IEs, uh, matching ants, marching ants, or masks, uh, mask mode. Your selected brush pre presets, color, space, image size, and um, provides a convenient zoom control. Oh. Whoops, I hit something. There we go. I was just having issues loading that. And the uh, last part, floating panel docker. These can be popped in and out of their docks at any time in order to see a greater range of options. A good example of this would be preset docks docker or the palette docker. Here, wait, did I read status bar or did I accidentally skip status bar? Okay, here's the E. I think I accidentally skipped status bar. Whoops, <laughs> status bar. This space shows the preferred mode of showing selection. I oh, know I did read this. This is a lower section. Whoops, my bad. Your canvas sits on the middle. And unlike traditional paper or even most digital paintings, application painting applications, Krita provides the artist with a scrolling canvas in of infinite size. Not that you'll need of need it, of course. The standard navigation tools are as follows. Like, Give it the infinite size. That means you can make the image as big or small as you want, like without any restriction, which is pretty nice. I also want, like more detailed stuff. Navigating the canvas. Mainly, many of the canvas navigation actions, like rotation, mirroring, and zooming, have default keys attached to them. Panning, this can be done by either the middle uh, mouse button or by holding space plus left mouse button and the direct and the directional keys. Zooming, this screen zooming can be done through plus and minus, which I'm not gonna press because those are tied to my microphone. Using controls, uh, control space, or control middle mouse button, point at the wheel. Shortcuts allowing you to directly zoom with a stylus. Mirroring, something I play really a lot when it comes to probably making like characters or symmetrical objects. You can mirror the view. Uh, the mirror the view can be quickly done by a M key. Mirroring with a great technique at 
seasoned digital artist used to quickly review the composition of their work and ensure that it reads to it, it reads well even when flipped horizontally Uh, new in version 5.1, if you use Alt-M, mirroring will use the cursor position as the center, uh, center to mirror around instead of the middle of the view. There, are, there is also mirror canvas um, available in the shortcut settings to assign a to assign a shortcut to rotating you can rotate the canvas without transforming it transforming it can be done with a control plus <coughs> bracket uh, shortcut or four key fat key and then another then and other way with control the other bracket shortcut or six key quick mouse base rotation is done with a shift space and shift middle mouse uh, button shortcuts to reset rotation use the five key you can also find these under view canvas let me drink something. My mouth is a little bit dry. Ah. I was starting to feel my throat a little bit dry. After all, I've been like talking and reading these for how long now? Two and a half hours. Normally when I'm talking during my game se sections, uh, it's not as much and the tone is different. Now let's see, Dockers. Krita subdividers mm, subdivides many of its options into functional panels called dockers, uh, also known as docks. Dockers are a small window that can contain, for example, things like the player stack, control, color, palette, or list of brush presets. Think of them as the painter's palette or his water or his brush kit. They can be activated by choosing the settings menu in, and the docker submenu. There you will find a long list of available options. Excuse me. Dockers can be removed by clicking on the X in the upper right of the docker window. Dockers, as the name implies, can be docked into the main interface. If you do this by dragging the docker on the onto the sides of the canvas or top or bottom, if you prefer, dockers contain many of the uh, hidden and powerful aspects of Krita that you will want to explore as you start delving deeper into the application. You can arrange the dockers in almost any uh, permutation and combination according to the, the needs of your workflow, and then save these arrangements as workspace. What workspaces? Dockers can be prevented from docking by pressing the control key before starting to drag the docker. Siders. Krita uses these controls values like brush size, opacity, 
uh, Flo, uh, Hue, Saturation, etc. Below is an example of Krita's uh, sl slider. Uh, pretty standard. I think I've seen something similar somewhere else, I just don't remember where. The total range is represented from left to right. And blue bar gives an indication of where the position range is currently value. And it's going to value is. Clicking anywhere left or right, the slider will change the current number to something lower to the left or higher to the right. To input a specific number, hold the left mouse on or the right uh, yeah, this or the right uh, right mouse button uh, the slide uh, the slider a number can now be entered directly f from for even greater precision pressing the shift key while dragging the slider uh, changes the value at the smaller increment and pressing the control key while dragging the slider changes the value in whole numbers or multiple or multiples of five changed in version 5.1 shift while dragging will now also enable relative mode which means that the cursor can be dragged outside the slider area. That's pretty nice. Because uh, I tend to actually do that sometimes I'm dragging and all of a sudden, whoop, it goes off the, <laughs> of the slide. Toolbar. Toolbars are where some important actions and menus are placed so that they are ready and quickly available for the artist while painting. You can learn more about the Krita toolbar and how to configure them over at the toolbar section of the manual. Putting these to effect can um, to effective use can really speed up the artist's workflow, especially f for users of tablet uh, tablet monitors and tablet PCs, which I have neither. New in version 5, in addition to shortcuts and and the toolbar, you can also search and quick, quickly through all actions via the action search bar, which, ex, which is accessed by control enter. Uh, workspace chooser. The button on the very right of the toolbar is a workspace chooser. This allows you to load and save common configurations of the user interface in Krita. There are few common workspaces that come with Krita. Okay, so if I go into the app, oh, right now I would need to open it. Oh no, actually I can actually see it here. which yeah there are very few but there are a few not many let's see pop-up palette pop-up okay now I can okay, there we go I'm pop-up palette is a feature uh, unique to Krita, designed to increase the productivity of the artist. It is a circular menu uh, for quickly choosing brushes. Uh, therefore, the background colors, uh, recent colors while painting. Uh, no. 
foreground and background colors. Recent color while painting. Okay, I read that a little bit wrong. To access the palette, you can just uh, right click on the canvas and the palette will spawn at the position of the brush, uh, the brush tip or cursor. By tagging the brush uh, presets, presets, you can add particular sets of brushes to this palette. For example, if you add the ink brush, uh, the ink brush preset, the ink, the inking tag, you can change the tag to link to inking on the pop-up palette and you'll get all the inking brushes uh, in the palette <sighs> I probably wouldn't miss too much with this like I'll use it definitely to like switch between all of this and the fly and so, like the color of the fly but I probably won't go as far as editing unless fully necessary you can tag brush presets via the preset docker uh, check out the resource overview page to know more about the tagging in general. If you call, if you call up the pop-up palette again, you can click um, the tag icon and select tag. In fact, you can make multiple tags and switch between them. When you need more than ten pr uh, presets. Go into settings, configure Krita, general, miscellaneous, number of palette presets, and change the number uh, of present from 10 to something you feel comfortable. Well, that ended quickly. I thought that part would be a little bit longer. Uh oh, let's see, how long have I been going? Instruction coming from other softwares, of which I'm gonna skip this because I've never used other softwares. So I can skip that. If you have gone through other softwares, then yes, we would advise you go through that. So you maybe see the differences and where things are and how they work. I never used any other art software, like anything similar to Creed, I've never used it, so it serves me no purpose. And this is for those that come from Photoshop, which I never used Photoshop. So I am gonna just skip over this. If you are a Photoshop user trying to jump onto this, I would advise you actually go through this. Just in case. Because I don't come from Photoshop. I am pretty sure I can actually just skip this. Wow, that looks good. Might as well look at the images and actually admire them a little bit. I'm pretty sure I won't understand any of that because I don't come from Photoshop. This is coming from Paint Tools. So again, I'll skip because I don't come from any any of those tools. So it's a drawing tablet. This part I'm also going to skip because I don't have a drawing tablet. I'll probably come back to it when it comes to it, but I really do not have one, unfortunately. Maybe later down the line, I might get one. But at, that, at the current time, no. I don't have the money for that. Now, loading and saving brush. Okay, now this is where I'll pick up next Tuesday. I'm gonna leave the Krita section here. I'm almost at our mark. And like I said, these uh, Krita sections on my stream, they're gonna be only uh, an hour long. And like Blender, this will be uploaded separately. It's its own video. 
photos that don't care about the blender section of my bots that you don't have to worry about skipping all the way you can just find the video over on my YouTube or my vstream now uh, there is some brushes this one is gonna take me a while it is relatively long and it seems like I'm going to explain a few things over the brushes but find a, an overview of it not sure yet there's still plenty for me to go through uh, hopefully it's not long till I actually start doing some like hands on actually start drawing something Hopefully maybe there's something like more practical to do with the tutorials. I know I'm pretty sure on Blender there will be, but on Krita I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, I've never used any software like this. Ever. Uh, paint? I messed with that when I was a kid. Right now, I just use it if I want to convert a PG to a JPEG because YouTube doesn't support a certain size, of which is kind of bullshit most of the time. Why well, it doesn't support those sizes are more common size when it comes to PNGs, which are better quality. But anyways, um, I'm gonna be ending first the recording before ending the stream because I then I'm gonna have to do something regarding like media shower on the on the V stream side. So, uh, in about outro, well, quote unquote outro. So, um. Like I said, I did skip a few things because those are like coming from other art related platforms. I don't come from any art related platforms. So if you want to go through them, just go to the Krita page, learn section, uh, getting started, and you will find it there. And I would advise you probably if you're hopping over into Krita coming from those, maybe it would be a good idea to go read those. Get the differences and understand maybe something there from there doesn't work on here or maybe here it works differently. Not entirely sure. There were a few things I myself said I don't understand because I'm not an artist. Maybe if anyone does, they can explain it to me a little bit better down in the description, down in the comments below. I do read my comments and get a better grasp of this stuff. But anyways, uh, uh, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's video, and I hope to see you all next time. Bye bye! And recording stopped. Now I can look into who I can meet a shower over on Vstream. I'm gonna leave the music still running. Um, gonna switch over to that so I can actually go ahead and close Krita and then end up doing anything with it. I just have it open just in case. I actually need it. Now let me head over to Vstream and see who I can. Meteor Shower. I still haven't had time to look into kick rates. I don't know how that works yet. And either way, I wouldn't really know who to raid because I don't follow anyone on Cake yet. So I gotta actually start looking into other people's streams over on Cake to like find people that are worth raiding, whether it be for art or for gaming. I'm mainly a gaming channel. I just recently got into this art stuff, and I do want to learn to use both of these platforms because I know that one that will benefit me uh, and Jim on our Unreal project once we start actually doing that because I'll, I'll be able to may might be able to do some assets for whatever we make unless he gets a job and then which I would have to figure something out myself then and also because I just I can't pay for someone to make me an avatar I might have to make it myself Along with other stuff like I don't know a banner or emotes. Like right now, my emotes over on B stream side are just my characters' expressions. They're not actual emotes, but something, something. 
and there aren't that many people on right now only one of which I actually, actually no two of which I actually follow maybe three we got Hershey who slurks on my streams every once in a while doing some Baldur's Gate 3 with someone we got Bloody D doing some Resident Evil 6 or is, yeah it is so it says Resident Evil again but the it showed the that the thumbnail is Resident Evil 6 for some reason but I, it does not look like Resident Evil so then again I have not played that game so I have no idea <laughs> I don't see anyone doing art today, so let's see, who have, what about these two other people I don't recognize at all? Baz the Fowls in Sons of the Forest for someone, but I cannot load his preview. And Sino Blade Chronicles, being played by Riding the Waves? I don't wish it was on PC. I really would love to play the game, but I don't have it the uh, Nintendo console to do so to play it. So I'm actually gonna stop the music right now. Because I'm gonna to mute desktop right now. So I can actually open one of the um, V streams streams to properly copy the name and meteor shower and chat with them while I'm at it. Let's see who is in need of viewers while I'm at it. Set Sirius and Vasta Falls has the least amount. Set Sirius doing retro gaming. I do not recognize what game that is though. Oh, Snatchers. Now I recognize it. I haven't played that game yet. And I, can, I still cannot load past the false preview, so I won't. But he's either having some frame rate issues or I can't properly connect with it. And I'd rather be able to like chat with him for a little bit. I'll just do Hershey. Hershey lurks on my streams, uh, on B on B stream side, pretty often. Might as well send you guys her way. Uh, once things actually start loading. Slash Meteor Shower Hershey. There we go. So let's see. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. Tomorrow's Genshin. Uh, supposedly, my friend Strange Bro Jam will be coming back on Wednesdays. I don't know if we'll start with the Unreal right uh, right away. That is something I'll need to probably confirm with him first. And if we do, yep, expect to see some Unreal before Genshin. And well, that's gonna be it for today's stream. I'm a little bit tired from, especially from all that reading, so Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's stream. I hope you guys learned something with me. And I hope to see you all next time. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.